should you be investing in DMART? Because it looks like a Kroger's growth story in India. So if you ask yourself a question that, okay, why has DMART grown so fast? Very simple reason was that it ended up opening a lot of stores. And this is not an Indian stock that will go back to its previous prices at a brisk pace. Hi everyone. So on today's video, let's play a yes, no, maybe game. So what do I mean by this? So I'm going to do business analysis of three high growth stocks. And you tell me whether we should be adding it to our portfolio, maybe adding it or not adding it at all. So just to set some context, this will be a high growth, high return strategy type of stocks. These are called as X to 100 X stocks, which simply means that if you're looking to invest, 1 lakh rupee with the expectation that it can go to 1 crore. So these are the type of companies that you could consider picking. So Cathy Wood is an investor who experiments with this investing style of X to 100X. So just a very quick backdrop about her story. So she is an American investor who is celebrated across the world. I know a lot of people will say that she has lost of money this year, etc, etc. True. But in South Korea, retail investors call her money tree because of the returns that she ended up making in 2021. But yes, her portfolio is very risky, very volatile these are the returns of her portfolio that some years she makes like 150% return some years she loses a lot of money but net net she has been able to successfully beat the index so one could consider her to be a successful active investor and she adopts x to 100x investing strategy so on this video i am going to speak about three simple things point number one should you consider doing x to 100x investing Point number two, what is the nomenclature or basics associated with 100x investing? Third and finally, I will break apart three X to 100x type of stocks. So let us get the discussion started. And also, if you want to check some relatively low risk vest or medium risk vest, you could consider checking it on Vested. These are free from my side and the link is in the description box. So first and foremost, let us quickly discuss, should you be pursuing X to 100X opportunities? You will say that, okay, this is a ridiculous question. Why should I not be pursuing X to 100X opportunities? I keep on Googling all day how to buy penny stocks. I keep on Googling all day that how to find multi-bagger. I have joined 50 telegram groups. So of course I should be investing in these X to 100X opportunities. Okay, so there are three critical points that you should know. First and foremost, X to 100X opportunity of any type will be high risk, high reward strategy. It simply means that if you're going and investing one lakh rupees in these type of companies, it can absolutely go to zero or it could also become one crore rupee. A classic case in point is something like Bajaj Finance. Now everyone will say that, you know what, Bajaj Finance is a great company. You should buy it, number one, NBFC, all that stuff. But if you would have considered buying Bajaj Finance somewhere in, let's say, 2012, it was a fairly new company. It did not have a lot of history. You are betting on that company. That stock could have gone to 100x or that stock could have become complete dust. So the bottom line is that these are high risk, high reward strategies. So please curate your expectation. In the past, I have spoken about couple of high risk, high reward stocks. For example, NGL Fine Chemicals, Amrit Anjan. These are small cap companies. They are likely to become very big. It can also happen that they can end up generating a lot of losses. Please do not come every day and say that, you know what, today my loss on XYZ stock is this percent, that percent. If you can't even hold stocks for two months, especially 100x type of stocks, that becomes a problem. So probably this type of investing might not make sense for you. You should do stable investing. This brings us to second model that when you are playing 100x game, you should follow the VC game model. What is VC game model? Let me give you a quick background. So for example, when VC funds invest in startups, what do they do? If they have one crore rupee, they will divide that into 20 companies. They will make five, five lakh rupee investment across 20 companies. Now out of 20 companies, 18, 19 will go to complete zero. But one or two companies that will survive, they end up giving the investors or VC fund a gain of 100x. So they invested one crore rupee, 18 companies went to absolute zero. So they lost 90 lakhs there, but 10 lakh rupees survived. So that ended up becoming 20 X. So net net, are they profitable? The answer is yes. And that is the reason why so much money is being poured into the VC ecosystem. So that is the VC model. And you are also trying to replicate the same in your portfolio. So please understand that expectation. It is funny that when people say that, you know what, you talked about like India Bulls housing finance, I have lost like 90% of my portfolio because of India Bulls housing finance. Why? Who said that you should be going and investing 90% of your money in India Bulls housing finance? There is a reason why you build your portfolio slowly. So please keep these basic, basic points in mind. If volatility is not something that you can digest, please do not invest. Please curate your expectations sensibly. Point number three is called as flipping. It simply means that you make money as a stock market investor if the following scenario is playing out. So let me explain that by using the whiteboard. So let us consider the case of Zomato and hypothetically assume that 90% of people do not believe in Zomato's growth story as of now. They think that the stock is overvalued, it will not survive, 
right company is bad no one needs the product all negative negative things so what are they going to do these are naysayers they are non believers they will not invest 10% people let's assume that they believe in zomato's business model and they are going to invest as of now whatever the existing price is and by the way this is a disclaimer that they, i'm just picking zomato as an example please do not start saying that akshat you recommended zomato all that stuff so all right so let's continue with the example so in flipping what ends up happening is that let's take a scenario where after 3 years this situation changes that good news comes market is moving upward zomato is generating a lot of profits revenues then what will happen a lot of people from this category will migrate to this category and this is called as flipping and as a result even if let's say 30% people from this category migrate to this category then the stock price will definitely go 4x 5x right so that is the simple concept of flipping and flipping happens on volatile things volatile assets and that is the reason why there are investors like mr vijay kedia who love to invest in these x to 100x type of companies they get a lot of heat and even investors abroad for example kathy wood they get a lot of heat because they are deliberately looking to buy these type type of assets so with that view point in mind let us move to the second part of our discussion that what are some of the key features or traits of these x to 100x type of opportunities so according to me there are five specific traits of x to 100x type of opportunities so first and foremost that the size of the company should not be huge even if it is huge it should have the potential to grow exponentially for example amazon is a fairly big company but can it still go 100x I don't know for sure whether it will go to 100x but there is a lot of steam left in the company because they are expanding to new industries new opportunities but traditionally speaking if you identify a company which is fairly young which is not very much in size then it can grow to become really big a classic case in point is amritanjan it is a small cap company and it can potentially become really big after a few years if it keeps on generating good business and continues to do good work now comes the second thing that the industry should be a growth industry for example right now automobile industry is a industry which we can't say is a growing industry from a conventional sense for example companies like maruti they have been market leaders in conventional space not in electric vehicle space now the entire industry it is given is going to change to ev so we can't say that the conventional automobile industry is a growth industry so this is the second key trend that please pick a growing industry third key thing that the company should have opportunities to expand a classic case in point is zerudha zerudha started out in terms of opening dmart trading account now they are moving into different line of businesses they have a lot of cash sitting on their balance sheet so these type of expansion opportunities should be present with the firm fourth point is called as tam or total addressable market since we are trying to play the vc game as i explained on part 1 tam simply means that how big the industry can grow so that becomes the total addressable market for example right now in the ev sector in india what is the tam or the total addressable market size honestly it is not that big because consumers in india are very cost conscious or price conscious so unless the ev sector pricing point comes down dramatically the tam or opportunity in india from an ev segment point of view will not grow magnificently then comes the fifth and final point that if the industry is transformational then it can create a lot of impact a classic case in point is hdfc bank or private banking in india so before private banking in india there were only psus punjab national bank sbi etc etc then over time these private banks came in and they transformed the industry using what using tech especially digital banking so they used to settle the payments very quickly clear the checks very quickly and that transformed the industry so these are five specific traits if you see that in any stock then probably it is a 100x opportunity now with that lens let us speak about three specific stocks so i will speak about two us stocks and one indian stock so let us discuss the first stock which is called as ui path a lot of you have commented akshar ui path has been crushed by 50% this that you have already made a video on that yes and i still stand by the stock so let me discuss the updates on ui path so first and foremost what is it that ui path does so in very simple easy to understand language it is an rpa firm so rpas are basically bots these are intelligent automated workforce so to say that can replace manual labor a classic case in point is that for example right now you might have data entry operators which are sitting manually inputting a lot of data on the computer excel spreadsheets now can you replace this workforce using computer bots softwares etc that is what ui path is consistently doing now what is the tam or total addressable market size of this company or this opportunity because it is working on a transformational tech so the total opportunity as per several re 
research point comes out to be around 60 billion dollars which is a fairly big amount now uipath right now is not a very big firm because rpa as an industry itself is not very big and also its stock price has been crushed by roughly 57 percent in the last six months so does that mean that uipath is a very bad firm the answer is no you need to take a slightly more nuanced view so the word of the day today is nuanced let me know what does that mean and i will show you three specific charts associated with that so here is the first chart and this research was done by gartner and it still puts uipath at the top when it comes to rpa so if you believe in rpa as a technology and if you feel that mundane manual work is going to replace by robotics or intelligent softwares then uipath is still a very very strong company this is point one point two if you take a look at this chart these are the latest quarterly results for uipath and what you will see is their total customer base has increased their large scale customer base has increased their total contract value per contract has also increased and also the best part is that their dollar based net retention rate is 138 percent what it simply means is that last year if uipath was selling its service at 100 rupees now it is selling that same service for 138 rupees for that same client and clients are still buying it and they are still able to retain their clients so you'll say that okay this is such a great company then why did the stock price get tanked by 57 percent Okay, is it an internal fault or is it an external fault, so to say? So first and foremost, please consider the fact that companies like Apple have corrected by 25-30% already and those are trillion dollar companies. So a smaller company like UiPath falling by 55-56% is not the end of the world. Second key point, the US stock market in 2022 have been the worst performing stock market in the last 45-50 years. So since 1970, US markets have not performed as badly as they have in the first half of year 2022 so please consider all these facts and curate your expectation and you let me know in the comment box that is it a yes is it a no is it a maybe stock now let's move on to the second stock which is an indian stock and it is called as dmart now this is not a detailed stock analysis of dmart if you want me to make a detailed video on dmart let me know i will make a detailed video but here is a very quick outline on what is happening on dmart so first and foremost what is it that dmart does so dmart owns chain of hypermarts and they are expanding quite aggressively all across india in fact, from 2015 to 2020, they expanded quite aggressively and it generated a lot of interest in DMART stock. In very simple words, they are trying to create something called as hypermarts. Now, what is a hypermart? There are two standout features. One is that they are trying to provide things at a very inexpensive price. So this is the first thing. Second key thing is that they want to open really big stores. For example, you might have seen a company called as Decathlon doing the same. In the US, companies like Walmart or Kroger's are expert in terms of doing it. And if you consider Kroger's growth story, now here is the stock price chart for Kroger's and you will see that the stock has given exponential returns and is still continuing to do really well. So this brings us to the discussion that should you be investing in DMART because it looks like a Kroger's growth story in India. So if we remove all the bells and whistles and look at a very fundamental fact as to why DMART will grow or not grow, here is an oversimplified analysis. And again, let me know if you would want me to make a detailed video on this. So first and foremost, ask yourself a question that why did DMART's stock price grew a lot? So let me take you to DMART stock and you will clearly see that over the last five years, its stock price return has been 279% which is a very fabulous growth rate considering the fact that from its peak the stock has corrected by 40 percent so if you ask yourself a question that okay why has dmart grown so fast very simple reason was that it ended up opening a lot of stores now why did they open up so many stores one of the primary reasons was that they got to purchase land or enter into property arrangements where the real estate prices were very cheap and real estate prices over the last 10 years had been very very cheap i have made several videos on that topic now what is happening the real estate prices are going up in india due to the macroeconomic conditions that stock markets have become very volatile cryptos have become very volatile people are looking for safer options to invest real estate market had been lagging for the last 10 years and now it has started to bounce back now you will ask me that okay what is such a big deal with this dmart is still a great company yes it is a wonderful company take a look at this chart their 10 year profit compounding has been great their sales growth has been great and no doubt it is a wonderful company but the issue right now with the company is that it cannot expand too aggressively why because its goal is to create bigger and better stores unfortunately the new contracts or expansions that they will be undertaking it will hit their margins so as a result the stock has already corrected by 40 percent and 
and this is not an Indian stock that will go back to its previous prices at a brisk pace simply because of the fact that DMART's growth story will be shaped up by the fact that how much is the real estate prices in India and whether or not they can continue to expand their super store strategy. Now, does this mean that you should invest, not invest? I will not give any verdict. Is it a maybe, yes, no? You let me know in the comment box. Another related point, and please take this snippet with a grain of salt. This is the information that you will find in some of the media houses. I don't know to what extent this is correct or not. They talk about insider trading within DMART stocks, and they have categorically pointed out to the fact that Ramakant Bahati has sold 193 million worth of shares at a price of 3,880 rupees per share. Right now, it is trading at 3,400 rupees. Since this information is out, I'm not verifying it. Please do some legwork at your end to verify this news and take a call appropriately. Now, let me move on to the third and final stock for today, which is Coinbase. Now, Coinbase is a listed US crypto investment firm. Now, you will say that, you know what, crypto market is fluff here, this, that. Okay, so then you don't invest. There is no big deal in terms of investing or not investing in Coinbase. There are 100 other companies. Just understand the logic. It might be applicable to other industries also, whichever industries you are researching. So first and foremost, there is a lot of negative sentiment on cryptos simply because of the fact that all the things that were considered as growth assets are getting crushed. Cryptos to begin with, they were the highest growing assets back in 2020-2021 phase. As a result, they have corrected the most. Similarly, DMART, great growth asset, unfortunately corrected the most. So anything that was commanding rich valuations got crushed and Coinbase accordingly got crushed with it. Now, what is Coinbase business depends on? So first and foremost, it literally depends on trading volume of cryptocurrencies. You can clearly see this from the graph that whenever there is more positive sentiments in cryptocurrencies, Coinbase trading volume goes up. In other scenarios, when these sentiments are negative, trading volume of Coinbase goes down. Now, let us consider the quarterly result performance. Is it happening that, you know, Coinbase has lost a lot of steam? The answer seems like a yes and no, simply because of the fact that you can clearly see that overall transactions have come down from 2021 to 2022 period. But if you compare it to Q3 of 21, there has been a definite growth, right? So it's not as if that there is a secular decline in the number of transactions that are happening. Now, you might ask me that, okay, what is the major moat or compared advantage of the firm very simply put that it is a listed us regulated cryptocurrency buying platform so which is very very big and a mouthful so i'll break it apart they actually work with regulators because it is a listed company in the us so people who are sitting on the fence they are not completely pro crypto not anti crypto they just want to get little bit of exposure to crypto they buy and invest in something like coinbase and also in terms of the transaction volume in the us which is one of the most prominent cryptocurrencies market because china has banned cryptos but us is pro crypto that is what it's Teams, they will regulate cryptocurrencies, more specifically stable coins to begin with, and that will increase the regulatory compliances on Coinbase. So this is a pivotal movement for a company like Coinbase, because if the regulations turn favorable in the US, it has a massive growth trajectory because the industry is expanding. So since Coinbase is an industry leader in the US, so it will benefit immensely from regulation. Now, does that mean that the stock has no risk? The answer is no, because the competition is growing. People are moving to zero trading fee commission model, even in cryptocurrencies very similar to how companies have moved to zero brokerage in stock market same thing is happening in the crypto market so this crushes the margin for something like coinbase and also newer firms are getting into the market for example ftx is there binance us is getting into the market so the competition is likely to go up Having said all this, one singular point that you should remember in terms of taking a bet in something like Coinbase is that right now, gold's market cap is roughly around $10 trillion. Crypto's market cap right now is roughly at around $2 trillion. So if crypto, entire cryptocurrency market cap goes up to gold's market cap, there is a 5x growth. So this industry will at least exhibit 5x, 6x growth. And then you can figure out whether these companies are going to grow or not, despite having high competition. So this is where I will leave the discussion. I will not give my verdict, whether you should be buying it, not buying it. What am I doing on it? Please do a little bit of legwork. Investing is a serious game. It is for serious investors. If you just watch basic videos and invest, you are doing yourself a disservice. Please stop watching basic videos on investing. If you are a basic investor, please invest in index fund. Please invest in mutual funds. Please invest in FDs. Please invest in basic instruments. If you have a little bit of time, effort, energy and are willing to learn and take accountability for your investment, do consider researching about all these stocks. I feel it is a great time to pour in money. I'm actively looking for more good businesses to invest and I'm literally investing on every fall. So in case you want to check, I have talked more about my portfolio on this particular video. So do give it a go and you will understand more about my investment style and it will help you curate yours. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please press the like button and I will see you soon.